Hello and welcome, my name is Jonathan Ringer and I'm here to talk about how to create a pull request on Nix packages. So here I have a following program that I would like to add to Nix packages. This is the OpenRGB uh, program. What this allows me to do is control some of the RGB settings on my physical hardware. Um, there's usually not a very good way to do this in an open source fashion. Generally this is like a pr pr uh, proprietary program which is um, usually made and distributed uh, through the various manufacturers. Um, this is the only project that I found that kind of comes close to being able to do this in like a free and open source way. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm going to package today. So the first thing, um, if you want to make a PR against next packages is to see what dependencies are made. Um, from there you'll know whether or not it is able to be added. So for example, I go down to the Linux section down here to see what uh, I will be needing to install. Uh, most of the time they're going to be kind of oriented for uh, Debian or Ubuntu, uh, which which makes sense. Uh, that is the uh, pretty popular Linux distribution today. Uh, but you can see here that it needs some Qt dependencies, uh, libusb, um, the hidappy uh, dev package as well as uh, package config which which is fine uh, those all exist within the next packages and so then I know that I don't need to do any additional setup uh, for for this package here uh, the rest of this instructions just goes through on how to build the package so they use the the qmake command and um, that is a tool chain which is well supported with the next packages um, <coughs> okay so before we begin I'm going to take a, a little side note on how to look at how to use different uh, frameworks with the Nix packages. Uh, so this is the Nix packages manual. Uh, if you were just to search for Nix packages manual, uh, you'll see uh, it'll be your first hit. And uh, under the builder section, there's a languages and frameworks. Under here you will have different uh, either programming languages or frameworks in general. So Qt is considered a framework. Uh, and here they have like nice descriptive instructions on how to use uh, the Qt build toolchains within Nix. Um, so here, um, this is what I'll be mostly basing off of for my expression. And uh, if you want specific details on Qt, please refer to this. But let's begin. So <coughs> first, I'm within the Nix packages repository here. Uh, I need to find a location for my Nix expressions to live. So we'll go into packages. Uh, let's see here. Um, just like a top level overview over a lot of these. Usually they're fairly self-explanatory. Development usually refers to like pro uh, programming languages uh, and a few things that are used for like development of tools. Um, but since this is just going to be a application, uh, like a GUI application that I want to run, um, so like my my best probably uh, my best uh, directories here would be applications, uh, maybe. Uh, miscellaneous uh, or uh, probably not servers, definitely not OS specific uh, since this also can be built for Windows, um, definitely not shells not uh, and none of the others. Um, top level is kind of a special one, that one is kind of just where everything else is listed so this one is kind of usually not going to contain Nix expressions outside of just the ones that point to other ones. So here, uh, I think applications probably is the best fit. Uh, inside of here, um, you get to look over these, but uh, earlier I kind of concluded that miscellaneous probably is the best one, um, just given that it's it's about controlling the lights on your, your hardware. So let's go here. Uh, so here, uh, these will usually uh, correlate to the actual package name here. So like color RT here will correlate to the color RT or color T. Um, package itself. So um, here I'm, I'm just going to copy off of another existing package. Um, there's probably open, yeah, so there's already like an open BRF one. So I'll just copy one of those over to uh, the op <laughs> my open uh, RPG. Um, So we'll go into the open RGB uh, file uh, directory. Uh, we'll see that the pre-existing default.nix is there. Um, <clears throat> obviously the issue right now is 
Uh, this is not. Let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I was in the right directory. Okay, um, <clears throat> so one of the issues is that obviously this is aimed at a BRF. We don't, uh, we are not going to uh, have many similarities between the two. Uh, so we're going to use this cube makeup there uh, now that I see that. Um, but here, name, uh, using name explicitly is the kind of deprecated. Uh, we want to prefer P name uh, and then set version separately. Uh, the main reason behind this is that we use a tool called Repoology, which is a website um, as well as a way for uh, package repositories to kind of like display wh what their package version up, uh, like how up to date things are. Um, so we like to use that tool. And so we have to um, divide out P name uh, version. To get the version, uh, let's go back to the project. <coughs> On GitHub specifically, uh, we can go to the releases tab. So here we have two releases. Um, you can see here that this is the tag number. So like down uh, in the URL, you can see this releases tags. So it's a git tag that's been tagged at release 0 0.2. Um, and yeah, okay. So uh, version, we will assign to 0 0.2, which we just looked up. Uh, here I will want to reflect what the user already has. So calc programmer, it's in the oh, RGB. Repository uh, for rev, we could do rev uh, tags release like that. Uh, generally, uh, I just like to do the release name. So here, release, uh, and then our version. Um, this is kind of a short hack that I like to do, but I just replace one digit of the SHA um, just so that I get it invalidated and it'll tell me what the new one is. Um, if you want to be uh, absolutely like verifying that that is the correct SHA outside, you can copy the link location from where this release is located. Uh, and do like a Nix prefetch URL. Uh, that should uh, drive at the same SHA. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm not gonna bore everyone with the details of uh, Qt, how to build Qt packages, but in general uh, here, we will want the QMake to be available. Uh, we don't need that, we don't need that. Uh, for now, I'll leave off install phase. Um, we don't mind if it tidies up that. Uh, I'll come back to the metadata to, to fix that up uh, later, but uh, I just want to get this building for now. Okay, so one other thing that I want to do is just make sure that this also looks correctly. So make derivation standard. Uh, since make derivation comes from uh, what our Qt libs is going to be supplied, uh, if we go into here, uh, when you call the package, should be a libs for Qt. Yeah, so here adding uh, a library. Um, what we can do is we can do libs dot uh, libs for Qt5 and then call package. And so then a lot of these things will just be brought in by that. Um, so for example, this make derivation uh, gets, gets implemented through there. Uh, we don't need Qt base, we don't need this. Need that. Uh, there was two other things that it did mention. So the one was the the USB and then the Hidapi. Uh, to find these package names, um, you can go to the Nix. Uh, actually, you can just do Nix search. So if I wanted to, uh, I could do Nix search USB <coughs> here, and then you can see that like uh, libusb. This is most likely the one that I would want. Um, and then the same thing for uh, Hidapi. So uh, a lot of times when dealing with libraries, uh, sometimes the lib prefix will be truncated off of it. Um, and you just kind of have to know for that particular one, uh, which one it's referred to. Usually this is by set standard. So for example, on this one, uh, the upstream package calls it uh, Hidapi, um, but it will export. Oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> uh, 
that's a different package. Uh, but like for this one, um, most likely upstream, upstream has determined this name already for it. Um, and then it's just a convention when you make the build outputs that you will have like a lib hidapi.so uh, that's being exported. So, um, yeah, okay. So now that we have those there, uh, let's add those build inputs to our derivation. Okay, and now we should be able to try and build this. Uh, one problem right now is that there's actually not a good way for me to refer to this expression that I just made. Uh, even though it currently exists uh, within the package repository, there's no way for my default.nix and Nix packages to then actually look for uh, the package that I just made. So to add this so that like Nick packages then can call the corresponding re uh, expression, and you go to top level, uh, all packages. Uh, I'll look for a similar, similarly named package. So here, open resolve. That sounds pretty pretty close to what I would want. So let's just put it right alongside. Um, one thing to look out when, uh, though with uh, dealing with all packages is that sometimes these scopes uh, are meaningful. So here it's not, um, I'm at the top level. You can see that there's just only two spaces here. But for example, there's also Linux packages that are also in here in like their own miniature scope <coughs> by themselves. Uh, so they'll have four spaces of indention, but they they are special, and you don't want um, you just don't want to add your packages to like Linux packages dot whatever. Um, so that's one thing to be careful of. Um, earlier, I mentioned that we would be using the the libs for Qt here, uh, and then let's give it the path that we had earlier. So that was uh, applications, miscellaneous, open RGB. And now we should be able to build. OK, so undefined variable version. Um, if we look here, so what's going on is that I'm referencing version here. The problem, though, is that this doesn't really exist without uh, the rec keyword being there so that then the attribute that I am trying to define here can be searched and found uh, on line 5. Okay, it's going to tell me that it's the wrong SHA, which makes sense. Uh, I'm, I verified that the original SHA was the one that was uh, invalidated, so now when I run it, um, you see that it's, hey, it's actually doing QMake. Uh, and then the tool chain is also uh, making the corresponding make file. So I should be able to see what's in result. Uh, the problem though is that it doesn't look like there's anything in result. Uh, if we look at the the logs here, it looks like the what upstream did is that there's no install step. Uh, so by default, um, the install phase will just be make install, um, but there was no install rule on the make file that was generated as part of QMake. Um, and so what most likely happens is that now there's just a generated executable that is sitting there in the build directory that uh, was never actually placed into our like out path. Uh, so let's fix that. Uh, here, uh, let's just uh, define our own install phase. So install phase. Uh, we can do ls myself just to see what is produced. Um, there are better ways to debug uh, the middle of a Nix build, but since my build time here was on the order of seconds, I don't mind just rerunning it. And you can see here that this is everything that's at the top level directory when it finishes. So here, uh, open RG RGB, this is most likely the um, build artifact that I actually care about. And so then this is what I would want to carry over. Uh, you you can use the, um, this is like the most typical way that you would probably write this in bash. Uh, and then you would copy rgb over to uh, out slash bin. Here this would work. Okay, so if we look at the result, now there's a bin directory. Um, one, one other thing to note is this open RGB wrapped. Uh, 
what happened is that my original uh, open RGB uh, file was replaced by a little wrapper script, which then is going to uh, introduce all the Qt related uh, variables into like running that program. So let me just open this up real quick so we can see. And here, uh, this is what like the the make derivation, specifically for the Qt uh, like um, sorry, excuse me. The lose for qt 5call package, uh, the make derivation that it supplies adds a wrap qt apps hook, uh, and that apps hook will add this file, uh, which will take my old binaries and then do this wrapping here. So you can see that like all of the qt plugins will be correctly populated when I go to run this application. Uh, the other thing to note is that if we look at the, well, this is it's going to be a binary file, so it's going to be just an elf. But uh, that, that's what happened. Um, yeah, so now we should be able to run it. Uh, we go here, so here's open RGB. And you can see that there's not a lot populated, most likely because it needs uh, root credentials to look uh, at a lot of the hardware devices. So if I run it as sudo, you can see now that uh, it's able to pick up my uh, one, one of my uh, devices that has RGB on it, um, and this looks similar to what uh, was on the splash page. So I think this, yeah, so this is somewhat similar. I mean, obviously this looks a little nicer. Uh, there's probably a few things that I could do with Qt. Uh, also, if I had an actual desktop environment, uh, I just have a window manager, I don't have a desktop environment. Um, it probably looked even better. Um, the spacing on this is kind of weird, but that's probably my own doing. Okay, all right, so now that we've verified that it runs, um, that's great. Uh, for for most packages, there will usually be a test suite. I don't know if this one actually includes tests. Uh, it looks like it's not. Um, I will just say that my initial um, running of the program should be a test. Uh, if it's a CLI application, um, one thing that you can do is you can do some help. Actually, I should. This is able to print out help. Yeah, okay, so this is uh, just just running the actual command and doing help goes a long way to make sure that like it correctly linked together, that all of your de uh, dependencies at runtime are still visible. Um, like uh, you, even though I'm not doing like a GUI session, I'm making sure that the GUI is going to uh, run correctly. Um, at least if there was ever a dependency that was bumped, which I rely on, like libusb. Uh, then I can verify that like, hey, at least this builds and I'm able to get it um, to actually execute. So I'm going to do that real quick. Um, so let's uh, do install check equals true. And then as part of my install check phase, I'm just going to say, hey, uh, let's run the application that was installed there. This isn't absolutely necessary, but uh, myself included, or at least for myself uh, as a maintainer, I usually would like to see something that verifies that what you packaged and installed uh, runs on the platform. So like, for example, uh, this may also target Darwin or, or Mac OS. Um, and personally, I don't have any hardware really to verify that it runs or not. But uh, if this was part of their uh, Hydra, when it builds the package, is able to then run this uh, on the associated platform and verify that it's able to work. So um, here, we could just uh, build again. And we should see now a running uh, install check phase. Um, running install tests. Uh, if, I, if I did have the output, uh, I'm piping it to devnull right now, but if I did have the output, then you would see it in between here and then the, the post patch. So. Okay, all right, so I think uh, the package itself is in a good state. Uh, let's just uh, update some of the description here. Um, usually I just pull the title uh, from here. Um, hmm. Okay, let's look at what the GitLab has it called. Uh, open source RGB lighting control. Uh, okay, so 
the description should be relatively short. So I'm just going to copy that portion of the description. Uh, one thing to note for the contributing.md, uh, you should not have a period at the end because uh, it's kind of assumed that it's going to fit within like a small subject line. Uh, the home page generally uh, can uh, just point at a repository, so this is fine. Maintainers, I'm going to maintain this, so I'm going to put in my alias. It's John Ringer. Uh, license free. Let's give that a little bit of a better one. Um, generally, on uh, GitHub, uh, the license will be listed here in the top right hand corner, so GPL2. To look at what is available, you can use the Nix REPL, and uh, colon L will load everything at the current directory. Uh, since I'm in Nix packages, this will also load lib, so I can look at lib licenses. Uh, and then GPL, I can't remember it's 2, 2, 0, 2, whatever. So I'm just, so I'm going to do 2.0, which will be GPL 2. GPL 2. Uh, platforms. I'm going to do, uh, let's just do all for now. Um, and hopefully that works. It should work on all platforms uh, that Qt works on. Actually, let me see if platforms Qt works. Sometimes for certain frameworks, like uh, there will be like Mesa platforms, for example. Um, some some tool chains will have their own platforms defined, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So we'll just say all. Uh, but other than that, this looks like it's largely uh, able to be completed. Uh, if this is going to be your first PR into Nix packages, just remember that you also need to include yourself into the maintainers list. So what that looks like here is if I go into um, maintainers. There's a maintainers list here, and this holds uh, every single maintainer here in the Nix packages repo. So you'll just want to pretty much copy someone else's uh, entry, uh, substitute it with your own information, and uh, use it as a separate commit. Um, but if you're already added, then you should be already there. And, and this is where. Uh, this John Ringer attribute comes from is that there's a John Ringer entry in the maintainers list, and so then this lib.maintainers is just pointing to that. Um, one other thing that I like to do is just clean this up a little bit. Uh, I don't actually need standard m anywhere, so I can just make this into a lib, and that looks good. Yep. Okay, um, for the other part, actually submitting it. Uh, so let's do, let's make this into my own branch. Open RGB. Oh, I'm still in the maintainer directory. Okay. Uh, if you want to, you can review the changes. So, um, yep, that looks good. That looks good. Now for the commit message, you should always have, um, the install path. So here we entered our uh, open RGB, uh, and we will in it at the version number that we specified in the next expression. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I can push it to my fork. So just push generator open RGB. And you're done. Uh, the subject line will be carried over from your commit, um, which this, uh, if you only have one commit, otherwise it goes to the branch name. So you may have to change this. But for me, uh, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, uh, RGB program for control. Okay. Uh, and then just submit. That's it. Um, hopefully someone uh, just is able to review this, verify that it, it tests, uh, it works, and that there's no issues related to it. Um, I'm familiar with the contributing MD, so I'll check off on this, but uh, if it is your first commit, uh, it, it's worthwhile to look through this. It'll tell you how to format your, your git commits, as well as a few other policies that you should follow. Um, I know this for just working with Nix a lot. Um, 
but sometimes I, I, I learn new things. And also, these are subject to change too, as the community um, kind of incurs pain. So, like uh, these actually uh, are probably going to be very different from what they were a year ago. So, um, it's good to review those. Um, but yeah, each one of these are kind of self-explanatory. For the next packages review, um, there is a um, next packages review command here. Uh, if you want to use it and you don't have it installed, you can do next shell next packages review. Uh, it is packaged on next packages, obviously. Um, but yeah, then you're just able to do next packages pr nine nine zero or whatever the, the package number it happens to be. Uh, the main benefit of this though is that um, if there is any downstream packages that uh, your package affects, then it will also rebuild all of those. Um, if it's like over 100 packages, maybe your system probably like can't handle that like because some of these rebuilds do become very resource intensive. But if that's not the case and it's just a few packages, I would highly recommend doing next packages review. Uh, that way, if there is just something where it's like, oh, this other thing kind of just got broken by me, like, it's nice to see whether or not there's a regression. Um, that's the main reason why we include it here, is that uh, if I do something to like a Python package, and then there's 20 other Python packages that are affected by it, it's just nice to verify that I'm not introducing any regressions where something downstream used to work and now no longer does. But um, once this finishes, I... I should be able to verify that um, my package is good to go on next packages. And uh, yeah, so you see here, uh, one built. Um, and then I'm able to review it. Yep. So if, if I, as like a maintainer, this is what I would do, is that I would do next packages PR um, of the PR number, and then look through and make sure that it, it actually works, it runs, um, that the GUI opens, and uh, this also will usually spot issues where like maybe they ran it on Ubuntu, and Ubuntu it works because of the NPR environment, but then on Nixos it's missing some dependencies, and so then uh, we can fix it so that it works for all use cases. But uh, with that, um, I think I'm done with this package, and thank you for staying tuned.